Hey guys, welcome to another episode on my channel. Today we have something very interesting to test out and this is what I have for you guys. This is the Akana HD Fury. And yes, it allows you to connect your ARC, your Sonos ARC, to your TV regardless of whether it has an eARC port or not and you will be able to get full lossless Atmos signals into your ARC. Let's find out how well this works today. So a very quick intro into this unit. Let me just go through. This is the packaging that it comes with. I've taken it out. Um, it comes with a USB-A to USB-C cable, which I have not used. It looks to be about between four and six feet. And it comes with a, uh, this is a UK plug, uh, USB adapter. So it powers the unit. The unit here asks for an input of 5 volt DC at 2 amp. So whatever source that you're using, it has to support about a 10 watt output. I'll talk more about how to power this guy in a little bit. But overall, there's a small LCD screen here. If I connect the power, you will be able to see just how small the screen is and just how tiny the fonts are going to be. Um, let's hope that your eyesight is good and you will be able to see it, right? Um, when I'm zooming in this way, you think that you can read it, but because it is very much enlarged by the camera now, um, I have difficulties trying to read this. It's really, really small. The screen could be a little bit bigger, but well, it is what it is. Now it's got a rocker switch here, which will control the menu up and down. And by pressing it, you will be able to select it. Okay, the menu system is a little bit arcade. The rocker switch isn't of the best quality and the problem is also that the casing is actually made of plastic so it looks like a very um, cheap product but make no mistake this solution is not cheap now i go through the ports over here this is a power port which you connect a usb-c power in and this is the hdmi in so for hdmi in you have a Apple TV. This is an Apple TV 4K. I have actually tested it with um, the NVIDIA Shield 2019 version, which I didn't pull it out because it's uh, quite embedded into my entertainment console. So it was a little bit difficult. I have also plugged in a Sony X700 Blu-ray player and all of them work perfectly well. So just plug in, this is the input on this side. It should start detecting, but I'm not connecting anything now, so it won't be able to see it. Um, there is a RS-232 port. This is a serial port. Uh, most of the time, this is used for home automation. I have not gotten to the point of testing this yet, so I probably won't have the time to do so. Now there's another full-size USB-A port. It says update here. Again, uh, no information, not much literature on whatever is on the packaging on what this port does. I would assume that it is a firmware update of source where you will be able to plug in an update file on a USB drive and plug it in here so that you will update, which is actually in the menu itself. If you go in and here you have a firmware reset update firmware. So I didn't try this. Okay, and over on the other end, you have a ERC out. Now this ERC out port is where you send through an HDMI cable to the ARC, right? So connect your Sonos ARC to this port here and you'll be able to extract the audio, full lossless audio for Emma soundtrack into your Sonos ARC. HDMI out simply goes to the TV. Now, there is something very interesting about this HDMI port here, which goes out to the TV. If you connect it to the TV's ARC port, which is the HDMI ARC port, you will be able to get volume control using your TV remote or using a connected device to your TV to actually get the sound into the Arcana Fury, HD Fury, and you will be able to still play back on the arc so on the sonos arc now this means that you actually effectively have two sources one is the hdmi in which you plug in maybe your apple tv or your nvidia shield right the other end okay you will be able this hdmi out will take a tv's arc output 
right, into this device. Now, if your TV has EARC, then obviously it will be able to extract the signal here as well. And I've tried it. I hooked it up to an LG CX. It was able to play back full lossless Dolby Atmos sound. Now, the thing is, if you already have EARC on your TV, then literally no need for this device. So that was redundant anyway. But it was a good test because now you know that it will take bit for bit whatever comes out from your TV's ARC port and it will be able to play back. Now, the one device, one input device that I tried and didn't get to work is my PC. I tried to connect a PC using a HDMI cable and still sending Dolby Atmos signals to it. It did not handshake properly. Okay, so a very quick shout out to Sean. Sean is one of my viewers based in Singapore. He has reached out to me and he was very, very kind enough to lend me this HD Fury unit for testing purposes. I myself, I didn't get it. I went ahead to buy a TV that supports an EARC port in order to use the ARC to its maximum. But there are some use cases where this will come in handy. And let me go through those use cases in a little bit. So if you have a slightly older TV, I would say maybe the TV is uh, more than three years ago or it's a mid-range or low-range TV, low-end TV, you are unlikely to get an eARC port. So ARC, HDMI ARC, is actually a pretty common implementation now. So almost all the TVs that you get, and I would say that if your TV is less than five years old, you will most definitely be able to get an ARC port on the TV. With an ARC port, you are only going to be able to get lossy Dolby Atmos. So it plays via Dolby Digital Plus and it outputs a lossy, which is a compressed signal. So the dynamic range is not that big and the sound is not that impactful. I would say that without a side-by-side -side listening, you might not be able to tell it, but if you are trained and if you're experienced uh, on what a good Atmos sound source is like, you will be able to tell the difference between a lossy and a lossless Atmos soundtrack. So this device here enables you to extract Dolby Atmos True HD lossless signals into your source arc without your TV being compliant. Now, the other point about TV compliance is that the TV also probably needs to be able to process Atmos or actually have a bit perfect pass through uh, using the ARC port. But the problem is not all TVs support Atmos. And if they're not advertised to support Atmos, then you're going to have some trouble trying to get the Sonos Arc to uh, receive Dolby Atmos signal from your TV. So in that particular case, this becomes very useful again because you can have a direct connection from the Apple TV to your Sonos Arc with this device in the middle. Now, the other use case, which is actually going to be a pretty common use case, which my viewer, Sean, mentioned is that this particular device was going to be useful for projectors. Now, projectors, especially Chinese-based projectors like the WiMAX or the Xiaomi Short Throw Laser 4K projectors, they don't have actually a, an ARC port that is well implemented. Uh, let's not even talk about EARC port. Even the ARC port is terrible because there is such a big lag in the sound. I think the sound is like a, almost a full second or between 500 millisecond to a full second of lag between what is on the screen and what the sound you're hearing. So the lip sync issue, it cannot be corrected. It is too big a difference to be corrected. And this is where this device comes in useful. So you plug your whatever Apple TV or your NVIDIA shoe or your Blu-ray player into one end, which is this particular end here, the HDMI in, and then you output to your TV using the HDMI out and the eARC out goes to your Sonos Arc. And you will get glorious, lossless, true HD Dolby Atmos sounds on your Sonos Arc, which is exactly what you paid for in the soundbar. So the other use case is when your TV is really, really old, it doesn't even have an ARC port. So even if you are willing to live with Dolby Digital Plus playing lossy Atmos, you can't, right? And it doesn't process Atmos. Well, I would say that then you can use this device, but if you are buying the Sonos ARC, which is a pretty expensive soundbar, and given that they have jacked up the price to almost 900 US dollars now, at that point in time, if you're going to pair that soundbar with a TV that is that old, that doesn't even have an ARC port, then 
I would say you might be better served putting the money that you're going to spend on this guy, which is not cheap, uh, towards a new TV. Then again, back to the point, if you're using a projector, then you really don't have much of a choice except to use this guy. Now I'm going to go through a couple of things which this thing does very well, which I'm going to talk about. At first, when I started using this, I thought that, well, you're only going to be able to use an external streamer like the Apple TV 4K, and you won't be able to use any of the existing apps on the TV. But it so happens that this device actually will be able to take an HDMI out port here, when it's linked to the TV and your TV supports ARC, it will be able to use the apps on the TV. The ARC will be able to play sounds from the TV as though it is connected directly. So in a very, very uh, surprising way, pleasantly surprised way, that um, it actually takes the ARC signal, it actually takes the ARC signals, the audio signals from the TV. So you can use your built-in TV app and still play sounds through the Sonos Arc even when you're using this device and you're connecting another Apple TV through the HDMI in here. So very pleasant surprise. And what is amazing is that even when you are connected this way, your volume control actually still works. So your HDMI CEC from the TV actually gets processed by the Arcana HD Fury and it passes the volume control to the Sonos Arc. So with your TV remote control, you can play the apps on your TV and you can use it to control volume. Very well implemented there. So plus one. In terms of connection, you're going to have to run through quite a few more connections because you're going to have an external device. You're going to have the HDMI cable into the in port here. You're going to have to run one to the arc, one to the TV. So you're going to have a few cables running around and not to mention that you need the power cable to power up this device. You're going to have a couple more cables. Now, the best way to do this is to actually double side tape this unit to the back of your TV so that you don't see it. Now, the best way to power this device is not to use their given adapter because that will occupy another power switch. If your TV has a USB port that turns on and off, when you turn on and off the TV, then this will be a good candidate to use to power this particular HD Fury device. So connect the HD Fury to a USB port on your TV and you'll be good to go. Every time you turn off the TV, the HD Fury turns off. Every time you turn it on again, the HD Fury comes back to life. Now, it has one advantage, right? Which will be that when you connect it that way, when you use the TV, USB port to power the HD Fury, it will cycle the HD Fury every time you turn on your TV. And why that is important is I noticed that there were some handshaking issues here. There were some connection issues here. I don't know whether it's the port here. I'm using all very high quality HDMI cables. These are the 2.1. I've even used the 8K cables, which is the 2.1 spec cables. And they are kind of finicky. So if I so much as touch it a little bit um, while it is being powered, while it's powered up and in use, it might lose the signal. So I don't know because this unit is actually quite light. I don't think that um, they have done enough bracing of the ports on the PCB inside. Obviously, this doesn't belong to me, so I'm not about to open it up and check the circuit board inside to see how well they fabricated and constructed this. But in a way, I think uh, the whole device is blasticky, is light, but it looks pretty well put together. Just to mention that when you connect the cable, you probably have to sit it very securely. Otherwise, a slight knock might actually displace the signal, right? So the handshaking has a problem, which is why if you use the TV's USB to power this device, then it will keep cycling itself. So every time you turn on the TV, every time you turn on the Apple TV, it will be able to negotiate a signal and handshake properly so that that watching session will go on without a hitch. If you keep this powered using this device, there is no on-off switch here. So if your TV goes off, if your Apple TV goes off, then the handshaking might get impacted. And when the connection is lost and it doesn't say, it says no signal on the input or the output device is not connected, the TV is not connected, um, I realized that there's no good way to solve the problem until you power this device off or you even have to 
power off the TV or the Apple TV, reset everything just to make sure that everything handshakes properly again. And talk about handshaking, the other point I was mentioning earlier that you can get sound signals from the TV using the HDMI ARC port through the um, TV connection here, or you can get the HDMI in sound here uh, from your Apple TV, right? But when a signal cuts across, uh, it takes about five seconds before the sound comes on again. So there is some form of handshaking that is required when you're switching source, like switching between the Apple TV and the built-in apps on your TV. So there will be some of you who have a couple of devices. Maybe you are thinking that you want to route your NVIDIA Shield inside. You want to route your Apple TV into the same Akana HD Fury. You also want to route your Switch or any gaming console. But the problem is that the Akana only has one input, which is basically one HDMI in. So you can only connect one of these devices at once to get the full bandwidth Atmos from your devices. So I thought maybe you could use a switch and what kind of switch like this kind of HDMI switches. So this unit I have here is a China made uh, HDMI switcher. It has five inputs, very, very uh, versatile. You can connect up to five devices and output one HDMI. But the problem is that this particular device here does not pass through the signal properly. So uh, even if it was 4K, it wasn't passing through the Dolby Atmos signals properly. So the same viewer, Sean Cole, who has loaned me the Akana, has already tested it out with a switcher that is certified for 4K, 60 Hertz, and passes through Dolby Vision as well as Dolby Atmos. Tested with the Sonos Arc, with the Akana and it works. I'm gonna be putting the link down in the video description below or if you could scan this QR code, maybe, well, this QR code, then it will take you to the Amazon affiliate link which you can buy it and it is actually pretty cheap. So it should cost you right about 40 US dollars or so. Uh, shipped to Singapore, it costs about 65, 66 dollars. With that, you can wrap out to five HDMI devices through to your Akana HD Fury and you'll be able to extract Dolby Atmos from each and every of those devices. That should simplify your connection. Of course, Akana has their own switcher but it was going to cost quite a lot more. So I will recommend this because Sean has already tested it out and it works. So the last thing I'm going to have to talk about is the Sonos Beam. So apparently, the current version of the firmware here is 0.84 and with 0.84, there is actually an option for you to allow this connection to go to a Sonos Beam. Now, why it goes to the Sonos Beam, I'm not sure because the Sonos Beam Gen 1 actually only has an ARC port. It's not an eARC port. But apparently, if you use the Kana HD Fury with the Sonos Beam, it wasn't uh, working in the past. But with version 0.84, you will be able to connect this to the Sonos Beam and get it to work. So there is an option which I will show you here. If you could take a look at this, let's see, waiting for it to power on. Yep, and you go to audio, you modify, yep, here is the Sonos Beam mode, on or off, right? So if you're using a Sonos Beam, just set it to on. If you're not, turn it to off. Now, why am I talking about the Sonos Beam Gen 1? Well, because they have announced the Sonos Beam Gen 2. Now, with the Sonos Beam Gen 2, the Beam will now be able to accept Dolby Atmos signals. It will process Dolby Atmos. It is using a phase array, a five-phase array, to simulate Dolby Atmos sounds, which means to say it requires an EAC port. So the Beam Gen 2 will have an EAC port. Is it going to behave the same way as the Sonos Arc and you'll be able to use this like the Sonos Arc? I don't actually know. I don't think the Akana HD Fury has uh, uh, got their head around this yet because the Sonos Beam Gen 2 was just announced last week. If you missed that video, do check out that video up here. I'm going to link it up there. And on the 5th of October, when the Sonos Beam Gen 2 is being made available, then I believe the folks at Akana will then take the Beam Gen 2 and test it out. Hopefully, without making any changes, it will be able to detect it like it is a Sonos Arc. May, they may have to change the packaging a little bit to talk about the support for the Sonos Beam Gen 2, but otherwise, 
if the implementation is similar between the Gen 2 Beam and the Sonos Arc, then all is good. If not, then they have some work to do on the Arcana HD Fury to support the new Sonos Beam Gen 2. So this is a very quick video. I wasn't able to do much in-depth review on this guy because I wouldn't have much time to spend on the HD Fury. Now again, a very big thank you to Sean, our very nice viewer who has loaned me this unit to do some testing. If you are out to get a solution, if you're considering whether to get the Arcana HD Fury or not, from a practicality standpoint, from a price standpoint, I will stay clear of making any recommendation. I will just tell you that in terms of sound, this works. It passes through a full lossless True HD Dolby signal to your Atmos capable Sonos Arc. Sonos Beam, I'm not very sure, but Sonos Arc, yes, it works. It worked with my Sony X700 Blu-ray. It worked with an Apple TV 4K. It worked with an NVIDIA Shield 2019. So if you are still on the fence on whether you should get this device or not, this is my recommendation. Uh, if you actually are thinking of upgrading your TV, then you can skip this device. This is a device that probably in a couple of years time when all the TVs are capable of processing Atmos and all the TVs have an EAC port, then this will be kind of redundant. There will be other things inside here because it's supposed to help upscale as well. It is also capable of um, changing the EDID. So there are a couple of things that I have not had the time to go in depth into. But if you're out for this device just for lossless Adobe Atmos, then this works for you. I'll see you in my next video.